Well, a couple little shows you might know, like um, Mame, Milk and Honey, and one of the longest running Broadway musicals in history. I know because I was next door to it for a long time. Hello, Dolly. Would you welcome Jerry Herman? Jerry. Songs. I can't get that out of my head. Well, yeah. But none of them can. You walk out. You know, they always say, well, can you really walk out of the theater and hum those tunes? Well, that's all you hear going out of the theater. Is everybody uh, humming, uh, you know, dum, dum, da, dum, dum. And the one we're going to hear in a few minutes uh, uh, is the finale. Yeah. Difficult to write or easy? Did it flow easily? Well, I'll tell you, this was the easiest uh, for me, this show. Why? It was because of the collaboration that I had with Arthur Lawrence, our director, and Ooh. Harvey Firestein. We thought as one. Let me give you an example. One day, Harvey Firestein came in with the final scene of Act One, and in that scene were the words, I am what I am. And I said, wow, Harvey, that's got to be the title of the, of the last song of the act, and I wrote, I am what I am. I am my own special creation. And I played it the next day for Arthur Lawrence. You wrote it in one night? One night. And the next day, Arthur said, it's terrific, Jerry, but it would be better if it came from a production number that the audience had heard earlier in the, in the act. Right. I said, OK, give me another, another day. He went away, and I wrote, we are what we are, and we are the opening number. And now, every night, when that dramatic moment happens, when Alban can't finish that song, and he changes the lyric to I am what I am, that's the result of a collaboration of three minds thinking as one. Mm. That's why the show was so special for me. Mm. It's amazing. Do they come in, and uh, this is what I don't quite understand, in the building of a musical like that. In other words, they come in with a completed script, and then... No, you know, no. And then, all, then you all agree where the song should go. We started from absolute scratch, three men in a room, and we started to do an outline together, and... It, it turned into uh, the show that, that, that we have now without, without even an outline, without even a, a, an idea of where the songs were going to come. And the phone ringing all the time with Alan Carr saying, where are you in the show? <laughs> what have you done today? <laughs> Is there pressure? But Alan throws great parties. Oh. <laughs> the best right. opening night I've ever been to. Yeah, well, he makes <laughs> whatever he touches uh, exciting. Yeah. yeah. You're going to sing the title song for us right now, aren't you? Okay. Okay. Lacage. It's rather gaudy, but it's also rather grand. And while the waiter pads your check, he'll kiss your hand. The clever gigolos romance the wealthy matrons at Lacage. Oh. Fall. It's slightly 40s and a little bit new wave. You may be dancing with a girl who needs a shave. We're both the riffraff and the royalty, our patrons. The maitre d' is dashing casual fun. The hat check girl is flashing. We import the drinks that you buy, so your Perrier is Canada dry. Eccentric couples always punctuate the scene. A pair of eunuchs and a nun with a marine. To feel alive, you get a limousine to drive you to Lacage. Oh, oh. All week long, we're wondering who left a green G. Von she gown in the loop. You go alone to have the evening of your life. You meet your mistress and your boyfriend and your wife. It's a bonanza, it's a mad extravaganza. It's hot and hectic, effervescent and eclectic at La Carte. Oh. 